is this knife all looks or can it actually perform? What is going on guys? Carter here with Edged Mindset. We're taking a look at the Vero Engineering Nova. This is the latest release from the company at the time of filming this video. We're doing a full review on this baby. So top to bottom, we're gonna talk all about it. I've spent a lot of time with this knife. I've cut some stuff with this knife. I've carried it around. I have some opinions. Uh, we are going to, yeah, that's the point, right? We're gonna talk about it. Let's get these, these dumb, boring specs out of the way. Uh, we're looking at uh, what three and three quarter inch blade almost overall length is eight and a quarter really good blade to handle ratio in my opinion very very nice let's take a weight here this is going to be one of the only potential detriments on this knife at least from a practical standpoint 5.7 ounces so pretty hefty uh, let's compare that to this ketuo or carbon blades uh, ken onion buckhorn here uh, much much lighter 4.4 ounces and this isn't supposed to be a comparison video, but uh, you know, what the hell, we're doing it. And you can see that the size, <laughs> the buckhorn is actually a little bit bigger and a whole lot lighter. So uh, the Nova is a chunky, chunky girl, which personally I like. And some of that is uh, just because I was surprised. Um, this is the first Vero knife that I have ever handled. And I always kind of pictured them as being... Uh, kind of small, lightweight, kind of that little itty bitty fidgety knife thing. Um, but I always wanted to try one out and I really like the clean aesthetics of it. I don't have a lot of knives or any knives that kind of have this minimalist look to it. So I thought, you know what, let me jump on this release and grab this Nova. And I was very surprised at how big and beefy it actually is. You can see it's just barely bigger than a paramilitary two. Let's compare it to a Remet Rhino, quite a bit bigger than the Remet Rhino right there. So very uh, reasonably sized, <laughs> it's pretty big. If you look at the width there, compared to the PM2, which isn't the best comparison because these are aftermarket scales on the PM2, but you can see a little bit thicker than the PM2. And of course, full titanium. We are rocking Magna Cut. I am very impressed with Magna Cut. I've officially gone on board with Magna Cut. I've used it a lot. Um, I've researched its history and how it performs, and to me, it is taking the place of the new all-purpose blade steel. Now, is it the best at everything? No. But in terms of kind of the default steel for everyday carry knives, I think it is, it's king, right? Um, it's match of toughness and hardness, um, it's uh, stainless capabilities. I mean, it just kind of is a good all-purpose steel, especially when heat treated correctly, um, at around 63 HRC. Uh, very, very nice stuff. I really, really like it. Doesn't mean I don't like other kind of more purpose-built steels too, uh, but Magna Cut is awesome. Now this knife features a very high flat grind with beautiful grind lines. I'm a sucker for those grind lines. Something about the juxtaposition of kind of the rough grinds with like smooth handles or kind of cleaner satin just does something to me. Got this nice swedge up top, which also has that kind of rougher, higher grit grind. And then you've got the opening milled channel right there that has a bead blast inside, which is mirrored on both sides. Now, this blade is very, very usable. It is very purpose-built. It is nice and thin, but not too thin behind the edge. Um, so it's robust. It's thick enough that it's not going to break or chip or roll on you, uh, but it will slice through whatever you need to slice through. You can see the thickness right there. Really impressed with the blade and how it's performed for me, as well as how it looks. The only critique I could maybe see is it is on the wider side, but that's also what allows you to kind of get that mix of strength and sliceability by running this grind so high without making it really, really thin with like a, a deep hollow grind or anything. So very impressed with the blade. We have titanium handles, uh, beautiful custom hardware, no screw hole on this side. You can see a beautiful satin finish. Um, oh, by the way, this is OEM'd by Best Tech. I think I may have misspoke on the unboxing and said it was Riot. The previous release to this, the Lux, was made by Riot, and I mistakenly assumed that this one was as well because it looks very Riot-y with the grind lines right there. I just assumed that Vero had switched to Riot like a lot of these companies do. They start with some of the, I don't want to say lower end, but you know, some of the lesser OEMs, and then they move their way up to the top dog, which is Riot which I assumed had happened here, but apparently this one was done by Best Tech, and uh, so far they've done an amazing job in my opinion. Um, 
I think they, they really knocked it out of the park. Full titanium handles, full titanium backspacer, which is part of the reason there's so much weight. Um, that's a lot of titanium going on. I don't know if you can see in there, but the stop pin in the back there, this backspacer actually kind of wraps around that stop pin, which is kind of cool. So very nice. Um, you can see here we are running, uh, which I don't love, but we're running flat up against that stop pin right here. It is not shouldered. I would kind of prefer it to be shouldered, but it also seems to be engaging with maybe the entirety no, it's just hitting that stop pin. So that is one thing I'll somewhat knock on it um, is the fact that it's not shouldered at all on this stop pin. In fact, I think you can see the line right there where it's hitting. Um, and for those that don't know, the reason I don't love that is eventually after a lot of hard opens, you're going to wear a little bit of a divot in the uh, back of the tang here. And that's going to cause the blade to ever so slightly sit further back when it locks up, which means your lockup is going to move in a little bit more. Now, lockup is nice and early, so practically I don't think it'll cause an issue, right? It just means this will probably settle in just a little bit, maybe a millimeter, half a millimeter, as it starts to wear that channel in the back of the tang there. You know, not a big deal. However, with a company like this that kind of seems to pride itself on engineering and design, I would have thought they would have done a little shouldering there. Now, the only downside to that is it would be a little more unsightly. Maybe that's why it wasn't done because this does have a front flipper here, how this is raised. Oh, uh, works really well, by the way. Uh, let's see if I can do the, the finger. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to now that I'm, I did it. Now that I'm on camera, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Um, so it would make it kind of ugly to have a little shouldering right there. So maybe it was an aesthetic reason and it really doesn't matter much. <laughs> like it's such a small nitpick, which I could do a whole video about, about knife reviews nowadays, but now's not the time. Um, Lock bar insert, I am a little disappointed they put the screw on the outside. Really should have put it on the inside. I don't know why they didn't do that other than maybe cost, um, because this is just kind of unsightly and it's unnecessary, especially for a knife that's going for kind of this modern, clean type look to it. Um, I really wish they would have done that. They did do a hidden screw on the pocket clip at least, which looks really nice. You can see how much better that looks right there. Um, this is right hand side tip up carry only. You can't swap to the other side. Um, I really like this pocket clip. It's cool. At first glance, it almost seems like it's a, a standard bent pocket clip, but then you realize, no, this is a milled pocket clip and something about how it's just uniform and flat like that with these nice angles that kind of mirror the angles on the handle here, the chamfering. Uh, looks really, really cool. And this V right there with the ERO, the Vero chef's kiss looks so clean and modern. So nice. Also on the spine here, you've got Vero once again, just really good design choices on this knife. So cleanly done. So nicely done. This is also the first Vero knife to have a lanyard hole or pin, whatever you want to call it right there. Uh, this also dropped with their very first lanyard bead, which I almost got, but then I changed my mind because uh, I don't have any money. So I just got, just got this guy right here. Action is fantastic. It is drop shutty, buttery, smooth. The blade has some weight to it, so you got to make sure and get your fingers out of the way. Reverse flick, thumb front flick. Uh, the finger front flick is pretty good. Um, if I can do it, that means it's pretty dang good. Thumb flick, not as good for me. I can't get in there as well as I would like. I have to kind of really angle it correctly. And even then I sometimes miss it. So I don't love the thumb flick as much, but reverse is fantastic. Action is fantastic. Lock up is bank vault. No wiggle, no slide, no slip, no, no flex on the lock bar. It is 100% absolutely rock solid. So is this a practical knife? Or is it all looks? I would say it's both. It's it's equal, right? The blade, as I mentioned before, is very usable. The steel choice is excellent. The grind is excellent. The mix between sliceability and strength is excellent. The handles are a little heavy. Um, being titanium, they are smooth, so there's not a lot of grip there. You do have this nice double finger, finger troil right there. The uh, jimping on the spine is very aggressive. So I, I feel like I have a good purchase, uh, but in terms of comparing it to something like, you know, G10, 
where you actually have a texture, even though this isn't the best example because it's pretty light textured, but you've got an actual texture to it. Uh, that would be better as well as, you know, you would lose some weight here, but you know, it's all about finding that balance, baby, between practicality and usability, but then also a little bit of flair, a little bit of pride in the knife that you have. And I think this achieves that in spades. Really like this one. Um, I think it kind of scratches my itch for this style of knife though. So I, I don't know if I'm gonna be getting any more like this in the future, whether it's actual Vero knives or something similar. The whole modernist clean thing, I appreciate. I'm glad I have an example of it and I'm glad this is the one that I got but I think it kind of fulfills that for my collection. Um, I'm kind of more of a crazy rough and tumble kind of, uh, you know, beat em up kind of knife type person, generally speaking. Uh, but like I said, something about this one just looks so clean and so nice. Um, had to pick it up, had to add it to the collection. Uh, let me know down below, what do you think of the Vero Nova? Um, I've got a lot of good positive response on the unboxing and the shorts I've done. Uh, a lot of people, you know, weren't aware of the company or were kind of like me, like they had seen them, but they just never really considered getting into it. Um, but after that video, it sounds like it kind of increased a little bit of interest, uh, which is what happened to me. So comment down below. What do you think of this knife um, or comment, whatever. Appreciate you all like subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Can't get enough of it. Couldn't do it without you. Wouldn't want to anyways. Talk to you later. I'm out.